My name's Savan, and I'm an artist. Thank you. I'm a sculptor, and now I'm a jewellery designer. Uh, and what I do is I take moulds from the surface of the glaciers, and I turn them into pieces, <coughs> excuse me, pieces of wearable sculpture or jewellery. And uh, you might be thinking, jewellery, glaciers, how does this all come to be? Chamonix, where's the connection here? And then um, give you a bit of feedback onto where it all started. Um, I was working as a painting and drawing tutor in Covent Garden. And uh, I, was, I was called up, I just finished my MA, and I was called up by a curator in The Hague, and she said, Sev, I want some new work. Do you want to see an exhibition? I said, yeah, of course, definitely. As every artist does, you just nod and say yes. So I did, I nodded and said yes a few times, and she said, great, well, you've got two months, it's got to be all new work, and um, do you want to see it still? I said, yeah, yeah of course. So uh, I had not, wasn't really sure what I was going to be doing, no idea at the time, but at the time, the work that she'd seen as the MA show was uh, super kind of organic stuff. I, wanted it, I, wanted, I was making stuff that looked like it had been dug up from the earth and then put onto the gallery space, put onto the gallery wall. And uh, it was covered in iron and pure pigment. It was dripping. There were flies all around it. And um, my tutor says to me, Sev, I'm not quite sure if I'm supposed to be praying to this thing or running away from it. <laughs> to this day, I'm not sure if that was a, it was a compliment or not. But either way, it, it, was, it was fine. Anyway, so how did this all come to be? So I was, uh, I was making this work. I was ready to do the show. I, had, uh, I called the curator back and I said, listen, you need to tell me what it's called. What's the title of the show? And she said... Good, good point, good question. The title is called Your Engagement Has Consequences. And I was all over it even more. I was thinking, brilliant, this is totally up my street. It's totally organic stuff that I can be working with. Anyway, still no idea what I was going to show. And um, a few days were going past, and I kept on thinking, you know, glaciers, glaciers in the back of my mind, because they're these, these majestic beasts that are kind of etching their way through our landscape, which then create the space that then we four live in today. And I was thinking, amazing, these things are great. They're kind of, they seem quite still, but yet the force that they're carving out this landscape is amazing. So two days later, I was in Chamonix on my way up to the Mare de Glass, um, not knowing what I was doing. Um, I'd never been on the glacier before. I didn't really know much about mountaineering, but luckily enough, I was with a friend who kind of knew what he was doing, and he said, um, don't worry, if you fall, take this ice axe and just fall on the pointy end and you'll be fine. <laughs> I said, okay, brilliant. So we made our way, on, we traversed down onto the glacier, and... Um, I, f I found a space to apply this, this uh, mould to the surface. I painted it on. I GPS coordinated where it was because we had to come back the next day because it took 24 hours to set. And then um, we did it, not knowing if it was going to work or not. Everyone said it wouldn't work because you need super amount of heat and you need the correct light and everything needs to be perfect. But I thought, come on, let's just get it happening and make it work. Uh, so we did. We left it, GPS coordinated, and went back to Chamonix. And... Um, just to know, everyone in Chamonix was kind of like, oh, so what are you doing here? You kind of, you were, you were, you were a climber, you were, you were a skier, you were a snowboarder. I was like, no, actually, I'm none of the above. I'm an artist. And that was kind of the end of the conversation. <laughs> um, anyway, so we went back down, and then the next day came, and it was, all, it was a bit of a stormy, and it was quite surreal, and uh, they're quite imposing places being on glaciers and being up in the mountains. They do kind of make you feel quite fragile. And um, anyway, we, we, we were looking for this mould, and there was a slight dusting of snow, and uh, we found it. And the glacier had, had, had shed this skin, this mould, which was revealing a fingerprint of this poised ice and rock, which would just be preserved forever. And I was thinking, great, this is working. So we picked up the other four moulds, went back down to Chamonix, and then two weeks later I was in The Hague, um, where the exhibition was going to be. And um, the intention was then to cast these, these moulds in pure pigment and put them on the wall, therefore locking kind of a sense of the glacier's poised moment, locking it forever. And um, I made them, a series of five pieces. And uh, the night of the exhibition, everything was going well. Door, no one was coming in yet. And then there was a huge crash, big smash behind me. I mean, the curator looked at each other and we were like, oh my God, we know what that is. That's one of the sculptures. Turned around, one of these sculptures, about 30, 40 kilograms, so just shattered into pieces all over the gallery floor. Anyway, I was gutted and devastated. I was thinking, how, what, why did we not just hang the thing properly? And anyway, we're picking up the pieces, clearing it up, didn't let anybody into the space. And uh, I picked up one of the pieces and thought, oh my God, what? The, this is like, this is the same, it was a piece of the glacier. And I just thought, wow, this contains, contains the same concept and narrative and story as a bigger sculpture would. You know, I quickly put it in my pocket and I thought, I can, I can turn these into bits of wearable sculpture. 
And uh, anyway, the exhibition went well, and it was fine. Here's a picture of the actual piece that I took. So we went back to the UK, and I cast it in silver to then um, sell a few pieces, friends and family, to then cast the big sculptures in bronze. Now, once you cast something in bronze, it's, it's not going anywhere. It's going to outlive absolutely everybody, unless someone nicks it, and it turns into something else. Um, <laughs> And then the idea behind that is that you are therefore locking forever something that's so transient and so fragile. Um, it's there, and it can be referenced at any point. And um, the GPS coordinates would be kind of etched onto the, the bottom end of the sculpture um, for then, if you imagine it's been passed down from a couple of generations, 100 years or so, someone looks at it and goes, what on earth is that kind of sculptural, gestural piece of art you've got on your wall? And you'd say, well, that's actually what a glacier used to look like. Here, type in these coordinates, do it into Google. Google will do its <clears> thing, zoom in onto the location where the, glass, where the mold was taken. And of course, it's quite likely that it won't be there. But you'll have documented this piece. And for me, I kind of, I was all over that. And um, so, yeah, jewellery. I was, <laughs> it's quite strange. I, was, I, I got the money together. So I, was, I was sold a few of the pieces, got the money together, thought, right, let's go to South Wales to a foundry and make these sculptures big. Let's get them in bronze. And um, on my way there, I was thinking, oh, do you know what, this is ridiculous. I mean, I've had some great conversations with people about the work. I'm interacting with people on such a different level. And they're interacting with it in a different, different aspect altogether than if it was in the white walls of a gallery space. I was thinking, well, do you know what, solve that. Let's start a different project. Let's set up Garagossi. So I, I started the project Garagossi. And um, that year, we moved to Chamonix. And obviously, as you know, Chamonix is like a prime example of you know, living amongst these beasts, these majestic giants, which are so fragile, they're kind of all around you, and kind of our interaction with those glaciers is evident every day. You go to bed, you hear them kind of cracking, kind of carving off. During the day, you can see the fine, smoggy dust that settles on top of them, darkening them, which then kind of helps them and kind of ends up speeding up the process of them melting. So there's a direct relationship between us and the glaciers, very evident every day. And... Um, I thought, brilliant, so I set up, set up a collection here, and um, I kind of, the whole point of the, the project really is to, to put into question, what's the symbol, what does the glacier symbolise to all of us? How does it make us feel? Well, being on that glacier, and you can feel really fragile, quite intimidating at times, but at the same time, you can feel quite, quite settling, quite grounded, you can get a sense of perspective. If you imagine the medieval paintings, they would, they would always be a big mahogany desk, and on that desk, typically, you'd have a skull, and that skull would be for the, everybody who's working at that desk, having a little bit of a daydream, can wander off and go, actually, let's not take this so seriously. Let's be optimistic, because I'm going to end up being like that one day. And I thought, we don't, we don't need a skull. No one's got a mahogany table anymore they do their work on. We've got glaciers here, everywhere. And they're, 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 they're very present. And um, I think that's, that, that was the kind of the epitome of the work. And um, I just want us all to have a little bit of think about that, and how we can how we can continue to work and always have optimism towards what we do. To make art is optimistic. It always is. But not to make art is not optimistic. And to live in a landscape like this, where our engagement has visible consequences, is something that I'm trying to incorporate into the work. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>